nuclear energy. It's the use of energy released during fission or fusion, and it gives electricity to 20% of the U.S. and 11% of the entire world. Currently, there are nearly 100 power plants spanning across the U.S., and over 400 power plants worldwide generating electricity. It's roughly generating about 805 billion kilowatt hours, which can power roughly 74 million homes across the United States alone. According to Yusuf Kaplan in his paper, The Overview of the Nuclear Energy Situation in the World in Turkey, the U.S. is currently, quote, accounting for more than 30% of worldwide nuclear generation of electricity. Along with providing 75 million American homes, it's also substantially cheaper than other sources of energy, such as coal or natural gases. According to the Institute for Energy Resource, nuclear energy produces electricity at as low as $2.10 per kilowatt hour, compared to sources like coal, which average $3.23 per kilowatt hour, and the price of $4.15 per kilowatt hour for natural gases. In his paper, A Critical Assessment of Industrial Coal Drying Technologies, Role of Energy, Emissions, Risk, and Sustainability by S.V. Jangham, quote, coal fuels around 40% of the power stations around the world. Not only is it more expensive, but coal also results in the production of harmful emissions that damage the planet and its atmosphere. This occurs during the collection process of coal, as well as the burning of it. These emissions include, but are not limited to, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide, and ash, all of which contribute to acid rain, respiratory illnesses, and smog, damaging our homes and environment. The Union of Concerned Scientists looked into the CO2 emissions during the process of collecting and burning natural gases for energy. When collected, transporting the gases, quote, resulted in the leakage of methane, the primary component of natural gas that is 34 times stronger than CO2 at trapping heat over a 100-year period and 86 times stronger over 20 years. According to Professor Sachin Jangham, quote, China's electricity consumption is expected to double by 2020, end quote. And when coal supplies 40% of the world's power, dangerous emissions will increase directly with the amount of energy used. Nuclear energy has many benefits, such as efficiency, price, and the lack of detrimental emissions. It also supplies hundreds of thousands of jobs worldwide, ranging from skilled trades like pipe fitters or welders, to white collar jobs like management or accounting, to specialists such as radiologists and reactor operators. The Nuclear Energy Institute says, quote, we can count on nuclear plants to generate a steady supply of power around the clock 24-7. Nuclear plants, quote, also keep up to two years of fuel on site and do not depend on specific weather conditions in order to function. Therefore, in the event of a polar vortex or a heat wave, when renewable resources may become unavailable, nuclear energy is able to continue to provide power to families in need. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, nuclear power plants are also more efficient than others. As of October of 2017, nuclear plants run at an average of 92% of their capacity. Geothermal runs in second place at a 74% capacity, natural gas at 56%, and coal at 53% in relation to being at full capacity. In most power plants, to generate electricity, you need to spin a turbine. The turbine has a central rod which rotates a coil through magnets, generating an electromagnetic field. Coal, natural gas, and nuclear power all heat water into steam to turn a turbine. Nuclear plants differ from the others in that no burning is done. Instead, nuclear plants utilize power from uranium. According to author Rinkish from conserveenergyfuture.com, just like other sources of fuel, uranium is also finite and exists in few of the countries. It is pretty expensive to mine, refine, and transport. Water wells are drilled into the uranium deposit and the groundwater is circulated. Um, groundwater is circulated with oxygen. When oxygen is added to the water, it literally rusts the rock. When you rust a nail, um, the, the, the nail turns from silver or gray to a rusty red color. When you have uranium ore and you rust it, the rock turns from a gray to a yellowish color. That yellow oxidized uranium is soluble and it's brought to the surface and um, it's extracted from the water through a treatment process. Along with the expenses of mining uranium, the disposal of it and nuclear waste is also extremely costly. Darius Dixon from politico.com writes that there's an estimated $38 billion put into disposing of nuclear waste, and that's just a lowball estimate. He also states that the damages from nuclear waste disposal add up to nearly $50 billion. To put that in perspective, the Environmental Protection Agency's budget is only $8 billion yearly, meaning that the act of polluting the earth with the disposal of nuclear waste is over six times higher than the budget given to protect the earth from environmental harm. 
Along with those costs, the cost of maintaining the nuclear power plants is about $7.5 billion yearly. So disposing of nuclear waste costs $43 billion more than generating electricity by nuclear energy. That's a ridiculously large sum of money for disposing alone. What do they do with these things after we seal them? I hear they dump them in an abandoned chalk mine and cover them with cement. I hear they're sending them to one of those southern states where the governor's a crook. Either way, I'm sleeping good tonight. Well, sir, where should we dump this batch? The playground? No, all those bold children are arousing suspicion. To the park! I think it's full, sir. That's ridiculous! The last tree held nine drums! Agent Malone, Environmental Protection Agency. Some Boy Scouts stumbled on your little game of hide the ooze. Organizations such as the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations, and the World Association of Nuclear Operators work to maintain citizen safety by implementing plans and policies meant to ensure safety and security at nuclear power facilities in the U.S. and worldwide. The NRC is responsible for distributing operating licenses to all U.S. nuclear power plants. If a plant does not meet the standards and regulations set by the NRC, they will not be given a license to operate. All of these groups also regulate nuclear power plants through the regular inspection of equipment, management, and individual workers to prevent both mechanical and human error. Radioactive waste with low and intermediate levels of activity is already being disposed of in geological facilities in several countries. Since its inception, the IAEA has assisted its member states to safely manage their radioactive waste. The IAEA produces internationally respected safety standards and offers technical guidance. At its headquarters in Vienna, Austria, the IAEA hosts meetings and workshops, bringing together experts from around the world to exchange experiences. International teams, led by the IAEA, review security measures at waste storage facilities. The IAEA also helps countries to securely store high activity sources in advance of disposal. Its experts run training courses in radioactive waste management and conduct missions worldwide to assist with the conditioning of disused sealed radioactive sources. Sometimes, preventative measures don't always work, as seen with Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island in 1979 was the first wide-scale nuclear disaster in the United States, where the Unit 2 reactor had a meltdown due to design flaws and operator error. Luckily, very little radiation was exposed to the surrounding population, but it shows us that these disasters could happen close to home, like at Browns Ferry Nuclear Plant located on the Tennessee River. Some places aren't so lucky. Eight years after Three Mile Island, a catastrophic nuclear disaster took place at Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant in Pripyat, Soviet Union. Due to operator negligence and several design flaws, a reactor exploded releasing 5% of the reactor's core into the atmosphere, forcing locals to evacuate. The amount of radiation poisoning killed 28 people and caused heightened reportings of thyroid cancer, and those who cleaned up the site ended up with higher chances of developing leukemia. Many Western scientists have said this evening it could have been a complete oh, meltdown. Down. The TMI accident was nothing compared with this. Uh, the TMI accident uh, noted uh, high expo moderate exposures, really, like an X-ray within a mile or so of the plant. That was seven years ago this spring, and nobody was killed, and very little radiation got out, despite all the alarm, because at Three Mile Island and all other American nuclear power plants, there's a containment building. A short, squat silo made of very thick concrete with an awful lot of steel in it, an expensive addition to the plant, which is supposed to contain radiation if anything goes wrong. Most Soviet nuclear power plants do not have such containment structures. Are they necessary? This is what can happen, and apparently has happened in Russia, as described by correspondent Marshall Frady in an ABC News close-up last summer. The worst that can happen involves a loss of cooling water around the fuel rods. 
Even if the plant operation is immediately shut down, the uncovered fuel rods would reach an extraordinary heat, soon melting themselves right through the reactor vessel, the beginning of a total meltdown. Ultra-hot radioactive material would drop to the floor of the chamber, burn through deep into the earth, possibly releasing enormous amounts of radiation. Radiation from any source can attack the thyroid, the skin, the lungs, the spleen, the liver, the kidneys, the bone, the muscle, the reproductive organs. Its effects, cancers, genetic mutations. The fear that an entire city could be turned into a ghost town gripped many Americans at the time. Chernobyl's catastrophic disasters put a lot of strain on the nuclear industry in the U.S., putting 40% of construction for future nuclear plants in the U.S. got put on hold. Regulation improvements in various groups were formed to ensure that a disaster like Chernobyl would be virtually impossible to ever happen again, like the creation of the International Atomic Energy Agency. With these factors in mind, nuclear energy could be seen as dangerous and less sustainable than other forms of energy. Here, Mr. Burns. Oh, really? And what would you use instead of nuclear power? Solar. Hydroelectric. A mix of conservation and wind. Who told you about those? A talking tree at a commercial. <sighs> well, I know when I've been licked. While it's cheaper and more sustainable than using coal, there are other options like solar and wind energy that are more environmentally sustainable and safer than nuclear energy. While nuclear energy has benefits such as zero harmful emissions, cheaper electricity costs, and an abundance of jobs, there still exists the looming threat that is meltdowns or radiation poisoning. Other sources such as solar, wind, or hydroelectric all supply jobs, produce cheaper energy, and restrict the release of greenhouse gases that damage our environment. Regardless of which form of clean energy is utilized, any change away from depleting fossil fuels is a step towards a greener future.